Hey guys, BD here. Today's video will be an update on what I've been doing since our last video two and a half years ago, as well as what I'm currently doing. Um, I'm going to touch on a few questions left in the comment section below, and I'll give you a few updates in regards to this channel, Threads by BD. <laughs> to start off with, we stopped recording YouTube videos two and a half years ago because my husband Sal, who also worked as the cameraman and the video editor for these videos, got a job in construction management, which was what he was studying, or what, yeah, what he studied at uni for. Um, and I started my second year at St. George TAFE, um, studying the Diploma of Applied Fashion Design Technology. So yeah, life pretty much got involved and we had to put a pause on all these videos. We just didn't have enough time to study and work and and live and make videos. Um, I'm also creating a capsule collection which I hope to have released by the end of this year, fingers crossed. Um, I've been working on a few custom slash commission pieces as well as picking up a few different things like video recording at um, car meetups and races and website building, just things that I've always been interested in. I never had the time to do it, but I, do, I sort of do now. Um, I'm also working, obviously, on this YouTube channel and on my blog, Threads by BD. So now for the comments. I've received heaps and heaps of comments and messages by YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and via email. Um, the past few years now and I haven't always been able to respond to them so I'm going to respond to a few of the most commonly asked questions now okay so pins whether or not you can sew over them with your machine to answer that question yes you can as long as the pins are perpendicular to the seam that you're sewing the worst that I've ever seen happen to a pin when the needle touches it if it's perpendicular to the seam um, is that the pin will bend However, if you have the pin parallel to the seam, then you run the risk of shattering your needle if it touches the pin. I don't know why that happens, but it does. And you can potentially get shards of needle in your arms, your hands, your face, your eyes. I mean, I've seen the whole thing. I've seen it before, so you really don't want to be doing that. Pretty please, if you are going to use your pins in your fabric, have them perpendicular to the seam that you're sewing versus parallel. Centimeters and inches. Okay, guys, I'm in Australia. We work with a metric system. I speak in centimeters. I apologize if you guys find it difficult. We do have the necessary conversions in all our videos, and we will have them in all our upcoming videos as well. Blocks and patterns. Blocks are not pattern pieces per se. They're more or less building blocks to create pattern pieces. So they won't have seam allowance on there. Their design lines are considered darts. Um, and we'll have more videos regarding that, but I'll talk about that a bit later on. Speed and sound of these videos. Let's start with speed. Um, if we didn't speed up certain parts of the videos, you guys would be left with a good hours long worth of video to sift through and watch to get to the end of this is how you create a basic bodice pattern. We've obviously found a way to shorten it and show you guys how to get to the end point um, the way we've done it, and it's worked. So we're not planning on making them any longer or slowing them down. So for those of you who have an issue with it, I'm sorry, you can go back and um, rewind YouTube videos, I guess, rewind for lack of a better use of, better term to use. Um, then you've got the sound. So we try really hard to get the sound as um, uniform as we can throughout the audio, the music. Um, if it doesn't work for you, you can always put the volume down. Um, as for my speaking, both sound and speed, I guess, um, I try to speak as clearly as I can into the microphone and we do voiceovers for all the instructional parts of the videos. So it's not sped up at all, otherwise I'd sound like a chipmunk and it's 
at a volume we think um, would help you the most to understand. I don't speak too fast during the instructional parts and I don't speak too slowly otherwise we'd have to stretch the video out way too long. Um, saying that we are still working or I guess it's now just me because Sal's at work and I'm doing all the editing and the recording um, but I will be working on making it as balanced as I can hopefully it helps you guys and it works out for me. So I received multiple messages um, on the topic that the way I teach is incorrect or the um, techniques I use is incorrect or the terms I use are incorrect. Not everyone pattern makes and sews the same way, just a heads up for you guys. Um, for those of you who do have an issue with the way I, I teach and I pattern make and I sew, um, I don't teach industry standards. Um, I have been taught industry standards and I find some of it worth learning and some of it sort of taking as, um, taking with a pinch of salt sometimes. Um, there are easier ways around around it, but they do it, but you know, the fashion industry does it because that's what they've always done. I was taught at TAFE, um, so that's industry standards for Australia, and I was taught in Burma, um, which is a third world country, by seamstresses there um, on how they pattern make and sew. Um, and so for these videos, what I do is I, I gather both of the information, both sets of information I know, and I sort of smush it together to find an easier way, an easier alternative for everyone, including myself, um, to create patterns and to create garments in general. Um, if you guys aren't happy with the way I teach because it isn't industry, it isn't industry standards, um, I highly recommend you go to a fashion college. There are so many around the world. There are really great ones in Sydney, the UK and the US in particular that I know of. Um, I know Dubai has got amazing places to learn from. But um, yeah, I, I tend to cater these videos towards DIYers because, well, if you want to learn industry standards or you know industry standards, you wouldn't be looking at these videos. Okay, so this last one is not so much um, a question to be answered as it is regarding questions and the way they get asked. Um, I received multiple messages over the past few years sort of demanding me to teach and show um, certain things, whether it's pattern making or sewing. And I can't help but feel like you guys don't get the fact that I'm a human being. I'm not a program that spits out answers. Um, and of course this isn't to everyone. I've, you've got, I've got lovely followers here um, on Instagram and on Facebook. There's just a, you know, a few that don't seem to grasp the fact that I don't get paid to answer these questions in such detailed um, forms. And if I do, if I don't respond to a message, it's not necessarily because I'm ignoring you. It's because I either can't physically or mentally respond to you or I don't know how to and I'm still figuring it out and it takes a while sometimes um, to, to figure out what your issue is and to um, put, a, put a response together that will help you out and it's not me just fluffing on about what I think is good but I trial it out first um, saying that um, the messages I received were a bit they weren't, they weren't all nasty they were just very abrupt and rude, in my opinion. And I, I guess I sort of just want to say in this section where if I do receive any more messages like that, you guys, I, not all of you, just, just the ones that send me those messages, um, don't expect me to respond or to help you out because I respond to comments and messages and emails because I want to help you guys out. I won't want to help you guys out if I feel like it's, you know, I feel like you guys expect it of me. I do it as, as a favour, not because I owe it to you or I owe it to anyone. In regards to the comments, I'm really bad at responding to the comments in the YouTube comment sections. I, I acknowledge that and I apologise. Um, saying that, I was considering, or I am considering, creating a Google Plus um, community, I guess, uh, group kind of thing, um, or a 
Discord channel on the Discord app. Um, just so we could, just so you guys can ask questions and I can answer them and they're all in one place in, in an app that I know how to use very well and you guys can post images of the things that you've created. Um, um, and yeah, I, so if, if you don't mind leaving a comment in the comment section below on this video and letting me know which one you'd prefer, whether it's the Google Plus community group thing or the Discord channel. So some of you might have noticed that I've changed the name of this channel to Threads by BD. Um, I wanted to be able to post more than just tutorials onto this channel, hence why the main change or the biggest change I could think of was to get rid of the DIY part of this um, channel's name, I guess. Also it ties in with my blog, um, my new Facebook page, Instagram and Snapchat accounts, um, all of which I will have linked in the description box below. As for the overall aesthetics of Threads by BD, um, I feel like it's more me versus the mainstream YouTube channel that we originally tried creating. Oh, and there's no longer a we for Threads by BD. It is just me, myself and I. Um, Sal is too busy with work and work and work um, and so I'm in charge of everything including the video recording that I'm doing now and the video editing that I will be doing later on yeah so that, that'll be fun <laughs> hopefully it turns out okay and I apologize in advance if it looks very bodgy it's my first time editing a video hopefully I do a good job as for videos that will come up on this channel um, There'll be tutorials and vlogs and, who knows, maybe some other stuff as well. Okay, so I've taken everyone's requests into consideration in regards to videos and tutorials for this channel. Um, and I personally believe I need to take it back to the basics. So we're going to do a reboot of the basic bodice pattern as our first tutorial to be uploaded. Um, it's going to be more of an extended bodice block, so an extended sloper um, with darts. And I want to start building up a library of basic blocks. That way, further on um, in the tutorials, I can start doing pattern manipulations and we can go through different necklines, different sleeve types, um, I can show you guys how to create different looks um, to the point where you guys won't even need to look at these videos anymore and you'll figure out how to make um, whatever pattern, whatever garment you ever wanted to make from the top of your head by these pattern blocks. Like They're the most important things I can teach you how to make. So that'll be the first thing, um, the first, I guess the first tutorial we'll be bringing back. Okay, so saying all of that, I'm pretty sure I've covered every topic I wanted to talk to you guys about. Um, so if you guys liked this video, if you can give it a thumbs up, please. Um, if you could share the video maybe, and if you haven't already, please, please, please subscribe to his precious color item. Last thing guys, I promise, I'm so sorry I forgot to mention this in the question section. But um, the demonic voice you just heard um, that says subscribe to us, precious. Um, I get a lot of questions asking me where I get where, where this demonic voice comes from. Um, and in all honesty, I recommend you guys watch The Lord of the Rings to understand completely. But to, to make it easy for you guys, because it is a very long trilogy, especially the extended edition, which I love watching. <sighs> I'm okay, moving on. Um, I recommend you watch the first 20 minutes of the second film, The Two Towers, to fully understand who I'm trying to um, become, I guess. Who who I'm embodying when I when I go demonic, as some of you guys have um, have have asked or have quoted it to be as demonic. Um, but yeah, I promise this is the last. That was the last thing. I'm I'm done for this stupidly long video. Um, so yeah, hope you guys have a great day, afternoon, night, morning, wherever you are. Bye.